My name is Don Coyas, and I'm the president and founder of White Bison, which is located in Colorado Springs. For the last 25 years, we have been involved in various aspects of healing of our Native communities, trying to understand the issues around our alcoholism, the drug abuse, the, the violence, our relatives going to prison. And about eight, nine years ago, we ran into some information, thanks to Dr. Maria Braveheart and Dr. Duran, that we started to understand the connectedness between the boarding school era and our communities. So what we would like to present here is a short overview of what happened during the boarding school eras, and it's important for us to have an understanding of what happened because it's going to be connected to the approaches that you will see in many of the training videos that you'll look at. So it's very important that everyone sees this video first to get an understanding of what the boarding schools did to our communities. So White Bison was formed in 1988, and its goal or its mission is to provide cultural-based tools and to heal from the intergenerational trauma. And with the understanding that the solution to the healing of our communities will be in each community applying its own culture. Because when you had your own culture a long time ago, you didn't have the issues that we are having today. So White Bison's mission is a sustainable grassroots movement that provides culturally based healing for the next seven generations of indigenous people. So it's important for us to understand what happened a long time ago. This was even when our elders were young, or maybe it was even before you were born. So where we originally got our culture from was from the earth. And we lived in various parts of the earth. Some lived by the water, some in the desert, some up north. But wherever we lived, the teachers were around there. We watched the animals, the birds, and we began to see that there were two worlds that existed. There's a world you could see, and there's a world that you could not see that we often refer to as the spiritual world. And so our communities, as they built and as we started to live together, we had a great understanding about these laws that the Creator put into place. And so there were laws that governed the seen world and laws that governed the unseen world. And we saw that both of these worlds were connected but they were separate. And so this was the original source of our culture. And so each culture is different because we lived on different parts of the earth. So during those days, this is what our community would look like. At our root level of our communities, we had spirituality, we had ceremonies, language, cultural values, we had teachings. And then we would take the little boy trees, and after they were born, we started to teach them and we showed them how to become men. In the same way with the young girls, we taught them how to become women. Then, of course, as the cycle of life continued, then the women became women elders. In the same way with the men, they become elders. Now, once you became an elder, then you had a job. And your job was to be available to the people because by the time you were elder, you understood the ceremonies, the cultural values, the language, the teachings. And so it was to the elders that we went to that helped us guide our communities so we knew what to do and what not to do. So during these days, we didn't have problems with alcoholism. We didn't have problems with domestic violence. We had problems, but we knew how to solve and resolve those problems. And so this would be a model of how our communities existed and uh, what we learned, you see, from the, from the earth. But then something happened to us. There's something that happened to us that took us from this and it took us into this, which is a model of how many of our communities are today. Alcoholism problems, sexual abuse problems, violence problems. 
But this thing that happened to us, it was actually funded by the United States government, and its intent was to destroy our nations, it was to destroy our communities, to destroy our family, and to destroy the individuals. Not only that, it was designed to destroy the family structure, to make the family system fall apart. And so this thing that was funded by the United States government over a period of years, we started to see issues appeared in our communities. So we started to see drug abuse, domestic violence, our people going to prison, mental health, sexual abuse, HIV, AIDS, alcoholism. And even in many of our communities, we see high levels of poverty, single parenting, we see loss of hope, high school dropouts, domestic violence, loss of traditional values. Even if you take a look at just our men, so you see many of our men are in prisons, you see absentees, absentee fathers uh, joining gangs, uh, alcoholic grandpas, etc. And so the issues that we have in our communities today Originally, it wasn't like that. So how was this done? This thing that was funded by the United States government, they knew that if they could take away our spiritual world, the world that you could not see, and because we lived in harmony with the earth, living by both the seen world and the unseen world, we had power. So it was decided if they could take the spiritually, spirituality away, it would knock us out of balance. And then what would happen is we would be really mixed up. So how was this done? What was funded by the United States government was a system of boarding schools. It started in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And over a period of time, it built 500 schools across the United States in which the government, the military, the local authorities, they came and they took the children away out of our camps and out of our villages and took them off to this school, and the purpose of that was to not have them be taught what we taught them, but to assimilate the native back into the dominant culture. So these schools were built all over the United States and Indian country, from the northwest part of the United States to California to Alaska to the mid part, mid upper Midwest, Central, any place there were native people. The systems of boarding schools were put into place that allowed the government to take our children. So as they took the children out of our camps, can you see what would happen is they were not being taught what we would teach them, but what they said is, we'll take the children and we will teach them what it is they need to know so that they could assimilate back into the dominant culture. And so... In these boarding schools, they were not taught the culture. The principles and the teachings that we would give them, they weren't taught that. But what happened instead of being taught what we wanted them to teach, they started to where they didn't experience information that we would give them. And so they didn't get any healing. They were not taught any ceremonies. They were punished if they spoke the language. There was no cultural values. There was no elders' teachings. And instead, what happened to them in these schools, if, if they spoke the language, they experienced beatings. And other things is uh, they took away the language so that they would only speak English. There were no elders' teachings given to them. Many of the kids that were in these boarding schools, they were sexually abused, or if they spoke their language, they got soap in the mouth. And so... As they grew up, they kind of grew up in a violent environment. No ceremonies, no culture, and they cut their hair. And so what happened was, as these kids went through this process, then what happened, they returned back to the reservation or the communities. And this was the first appearance of alcoholism in our communities. This was the first appearance where we started to see the violence in the communities. This was the first appearance where we started to see adults started to hurt children, the appearance of child abuse and the sexual abuse that went on in these communities. And so the boarding schools, the residential schools, what they 
did was was to start to destroy our family structures. Over a period of time, what it caused was something that we now know is called intergenerational trauma. In other words, if those ancestors inside of us, our grandpa and grandmas, if they were hurt, if they were abused, then we, this present day, are carrying the hurt of those who were wounded before us. It's called intergenerational trauma. And so that intergenerational trauma is carried on with the trauma that we experience in today's generation. And so this hurt and the issues and the problems and the violence, it resides like in our innermost part of our communities. And it takes three or four generations for this trauma to surface. And so we are in a period of time now where these issues from the boarding school, even if you didn't go to boarding school, you can still have boarding school, uh, the negative experiences of the boarding school. We now strongly, strongly believe that what's behind the sexual abuse in order for us to heal from it is we need to heal from the intergenerational trauma. Not only do we believe it's the root cause of the abuse of relationship issues, but it's also the root cause of the alcoholism. It's a root cause of the drug abuse, etc. And I think what we see in our communities today overall, as a result of the boarding school, we start to see adults hurting children. We're starting to see men hurting spouses. And so there's a violence that's in our communities to the point where, see, if you think that this is an agreeable saying, That if you are hurt, that hurt people, what happens is then you will turn around and you will hurt people. So hurt people hurt people. And so this is what we are passing down now from one generation to the next. From one generation to the next, we're passing down this trauma or the intergenerational trauma to the point where we're saying the descendants of the boarding school are experiencing the experiences that are those who went before us experienced in the boarding schools. And so it is important for us to know that this is what happened to our communities, something called historical trauma. What is historical trauma? It's a combination of immense losses and traumatic events that are perpetrated upon an entire culture. For us Native people, this included the loss of the culture, the loss of the language, the loss of the land, the loss of a lot of death of our people, a way of life, religion, and the destruction of the family structure, uh, family system. And so passing this down generation to generation, if we don't stop passing down the intergenerational trauma, then even our grandbabies now will be experiencing the result of the boarding school, and this is a cycle that we must break. I have heard it said, more powerful than the march of of mighty armies is an idea whose time has come. According to the prophecies and according to the elders, what they told us is that the old people told us that a healing time would come. And that when everything was right in the whole universe, what they said is that a time would come when a big change would take place. And we are now in the time of the fulfillment of prophecy and that the healing time is here. And so this is what White Bison is about. This is what the well Bridey movement is about. This information was given to us from my elders gathering in 1991. They started to prepare us for a healing time that was going to come. So instead of paying attention to the historical trauma, what we have to do is the opposite. So what we have to take a look at is intergenerational healing. The same way it was destroyed intergenerationally, we must now heal intergenerationally. And what is this? It's a combination of immense healing a lot of community training and a return to the ceremony, spirituality, and the culture of our people by bringing back the culture, the language, the land, to bringing back the people's health, the way of life, and by restoring the family structure, rebuilding it. 
So instead of passing down the intergenerational trauma, generation to generation, what we are now able to know that we must do is that we must break the cycle. And this is the generation that where we will take a look at healing ourselves, healing our men, healing our women, and of course as we heal them, then our children will heal. Those children will grow up and they're going to pass down the healing information that we are giving to them because we are taking back the educational process of our children and not letting somebody else to do it. So this is the basic information that needs to be reviewed before reviewing any of the training videos. All of our training is based on what happened in the boarding schools, what happened in the residential schools, what happened in the church schools, and for us to bring back the knowledge that we need to have now in order to break the cycle of intergenerational trauma.